Hey there, and thanks for checking out this video tutorial. My name is Chris, and I'm from Tech Coaches. In these instructions, I want to help you install the Zoom app for an iPad. This is great for doing video calls with your friends, family, or even organizations that you're working with. We're going to use the App Store in this scenario because we always do on an iPad to install apps, so you might want to have your Apple ID and your password available just in case the device asks for it. To get started, simply open up the App Store. It should open to the front page, which they call Today. I'll notice at the bottom of the screen there's a bunch of options, but I'm looking for Search. When I touch it, it turns blue, and now I can see a gray search box at the top of the screen that says Games, Apps, Stories, and More. If I touch on it, the keyboard should pop up, and now I'm able to type in the app that I'm looking for. In this case, it's called Zoom. So I'm simply going to type in the name of the app, and I'm going to push the blue search button, which will activate it. From here, it shows me the search results. The app I'm looking for is actually called Zoom Cloud Meetings. I can see that there's a cloud with a down arrow, and that means that I can push that and it will download the app. If you've had the app before, that's why it looks like a cloud. If you've never had the app before, you may see a button that's more similar to this Get button here, besides Zoom Rooms and Zoom for Intune, but I just want to remind you these are not the apps that you're looking for. You want the one called Zoom Cloud Meetings. So I'm going to go ahead and push on this cloud, and that's going to begin the download process. I'll see a little square and a blue circle going around that square, and when that process is completed, that's when I have the app and it's successfully installed and downloaded. Now that I have the Zoom app successfully installed on my iPad, I'm ready to accept an invitation to a video call. It's very common that people receive invitations via email, so let's check our inbox. After opening the Mail app, I'll click on the message from the colleague of mine that's inviting me to a call, and in that message itself, what I'm going to see is a blue underlined hyperlink. By clicking on that link, the Zoom app is going to automatically open and it's going to start asking me questions that help set it up for the first time. From here, I'm a couple steps away from participating in the call. First, because I've never done this before, I have to set it up. So I need to tell the Zoom app what name I would like displayed on the screen. In this scenario, I'm just going to say Tech Coaches and then I'm going to push this Continue button. After I push continue, it starts asking questions about access to the device itself. So in this question, it says, would you like to access the camera? And yes, I definitely do, because it wouldn't be much of a video call if I didn't access my camera with my iPad. So I'm going to push OK to that. And here we are. Hey there, folks. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push on join with video. That's going to include my video so that my colleague on the other end of this interaction can see me while I can see her. The next step is going to be allowing access to the microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and push OK on this question here. And then finally, Zoom would like to send me some notifications. So I'm going to push allow on that as well so that I'm well in tune with anything that Zoom is trying to say to me. Now this is the final question. It says, to hear others, please join audio, and I'm going to select call using internet audio. And from there, I should be connected. Hey, Melinda, how are you? Hi, Chris. Good. Hi, Chris. Good. Awesome. So that was pretty easy to do. I just wanted to point out that all of the controls of Zoom, they disappear when you're not touching the screen. So if I reach out here and I tap on the screen, what I notice is all of these different things appear that stay about two seconds if they're not used. And then as you notice, they just disappeared. So let's talk about a couple of those key items. Uh, first and foremost, as I touch the screen, I want to draw your attention to the top right hand corner. There's a mute button and a stop video button. I'll just bring those up one more time so, so that you can see them. If you want your sound to stop, you push mute. And if you want your video to stop, you push stop video. What you should know is that your name will be displayed instead of your image if you push stop video. So you're still going to be identified as a member in the meeting, but you're not going to be seen in terms of your video. Other than that, if I tap the screen again, what I wanted you to know is on the left side of the screen here, I have what's called switch to gallery view. And if I demonstrate that for you here, 
what it's going to do is it's going to share the screen between Melinda and myself. There you go. So now it's sharing as much as it can. And if there were four people, then there would be four different boxes going around the screen, just sharing it as much as, as possible. So I'm going to push the screen again, switch back to active speaker, where because this is a one on one meeting, that's why Melinda's the active speaker. And finally, the last thing I wanted to point out is in the top left corner, there is a leave meeting button. So when I'm done chatting with Melinda, I can get out of here. So Melinda, see you later. Thanks so much for the call. Bye, Chris. Bye, Chris. I push the screen, I tap on leave meeting. And once again, it asks me to confirm that I want to leave meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and push on that button there. And that, my friends, is exactly how you would participate in your very own Zoom meeting.